Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, just a quick intro. I'm Sajel. Um, I'm a college counselor and essay specialist at Great Expectations. I have a degree from NYU Tisch. Um, I love writing, come from an entertainment background. Um, shout out to those musical theater and acting students. And um, yeah, I have experience in college counseling, SAT work, and academic tutoring for five years plus. Great. Hi, everyone. I'm Linnell Kirstein. I'm a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I also have a background in entertainment, in entertainment marketing and advertising. Um, I'm also a children's book writer. I have a great passion for writing. And um, I also help people write their memoirs and do a lot of other kinds of creative writing too. So welcome. We're so excited to have you here tonight. We are going to be talking about crafting a strong, unique personal statement. And we just want to be clear on this. This is for the Common App. Um, some of the advice that we're going to give you tonight will work for other essays like the supplements and um, the UC personal insight questions, but those are usually shorter and so they require uh, a bit more of straightforward answers. The, you, um, the common app is going to be 650 words and some of those other essays are going to be shorter. So. Um, we're going to take it away. So Sage is going to go through some of what we are going to be looking at tonight. Yeah, so just a quick overview of what we're going to be discussing. So you have a heads up. Um, again, keep in mind any particular questions. Um, we're going to be going through the brainstorming process, then picking a prompt, going over the different common app prompts that you'll have available to you. Um, then the writing portion, which is going to encompass the big ideas, broader strokes, as well as the more technical, nitty gritty tips and techniques for writing. Um, we'll go over self-reflection and analysis portion with making the mundane more reflective. And then finally, we'll finish off with how to edit your essay. Okay, great. So we're going to um, start with brainstorming. But first, um, before we want to say just quickly that there are so many ways to tackle your personal statement and a, and a billion ways to brainstorm too. So we're going to just start by showing you a couple of different ways um, to approach something. And this is intentional. So if something doesn't necessarily resonate with you, maybe something else will. Um, we just want you to give you a lot of options so that hopefully you will be successful. Um, and it's really up to you to figure out what works best for you. So I'm going to start with the 10 things brainstorm. So sometimes with my students, um, I'll begin by asking them, what are the 10 things that they want the um, the college admissions team to know about them that they may not be getting from the rest of their application. So this can be emotions or phrases like, I'm a really nice person, or I spend most of my time taking care of my little sister. And then, you know, go away for a week, really think about this list. You can even ask your little sister what she might think about what she thinks that this um, admissions team needs to know about you. And then come back, we can talk about it. We can start brainstorming some anecdotes that would work with those words that, that align really well. And anecdotes are super important in an essay. They make for great stories. And those are the things that really draw a reader into an essay. Um, and these anecdotes, they don't have to be really big experiences. They can be those small moments. And it's really all about how they're written or what you take from an experience or what you've learned. So when you're brainstorming, just be sure you don't cut yourself off from the process. And remember, there's no perfect topic. There's like the perfect topic for you. And you might have several topics that you can't choose between. So I say explore them all and give them all time. 
don't limit yourself. And so the perfect topic is sure to emerge for you. All right, Sejal is going to talk about another brainstorming suggestion. Yeah, so, you know, you can do any sort of combination of these. You can pick one that works for you. You can pick something else. We're just trying to give you the different options to tackle this initial brainstorming process. So I call this the sort of bitball slash vomit brainstorm. It's just a means of idea generating, getting your, your mind going. Um, sort of the full version here where we bracket our brainstorm into a couple different categories. I like to bracket them as a starting point with personal challenges, culture slash identity, talents and skills, leadership, and then another final category for any weird, unique outliers. So things about you or memories that hold a particular significance that might not fit into any particular category. It could be a childhood nickname or a unique interest, um, just getting those ideas out on the page. And, you know, a lot of students will tell me, oh, I've done a brainstorm, um, but then I read it and it sounds very much like a resume. So the kind of brainstorm that we're going to ask you to do or that you want to be thinking about for your own personal statement is much more extensive in detail. It's going to have a lot more self-reflection. You're putting on the cap of what are the personal things that I want to talk about in my life rather than just a resume extracurricular type of list. Um, and then we're also immediately kind of starting to peel back the surface layer and get to that underlying significance of a particular experience, memory, or pivotal moment once you isolate those. So one of the strategies I like to, to kind of follow for doing that is called following the line of questioning. So we ask ourselves, why? If this moment is really significant for you, well, why is it significant? Um, can we go deeper? Can we get more personal? If it's that particular family trip that was significant, or if you keep coming back to that childhood nickname, who gave it to you? What's the history behind it? And what does it mean to you now? Has that meaning maybe evolved or changed over time? So we're going through a bit of detective work here. Um, and this can be an extensive process. So don't be um, discouraged if at the first initial list, you get some super, superficial topics. You'll have to go one by one and start to unpack them individually a bit. I also like to assess what I call threads throughout our experiences to see if there's an overlap, maybe in particular themes that are resonant for you, or maybe there's a recurring pattern of behavior or a particular, you know, range of similar moments that are significant. And ultimately you can use these threads to collect a better understanding of what makes you, you, your personality, your disposition, you know, maybe it's about introversion or extroversion. What are your tendencies? How, how do you express yourself? Is it through creativity or is it through more planned um, hands-on work? And so we're starting to, in a much more personal brain, personal place in the brainstorming process. Um, and then the, the other thing I want to address is a lot of students will tell me that, oh, I, I, my experiences are not special. There's nothing that great about them. They're not that challenging. They're pretty much like everyone else's. But I encourage everyone to look at their experiences almost more like a story or a movie. So if you think about that, you're thinking about your narrative in a lot more vivid color. How do you embellish that sort of highlight reel for yourself? Um, how do you pick up on those moments that you can describe in greater detail and expand upon with descriptive imagery? I think we're ready to move on to the next picking a prompt. Okay. So with picking a prompt, we are kind of using this methodology of creativity meets strategy. So we don't know exactly what a college is going to look for in a student in its student freshman class, but the prompts are going to give you a great format to help you pinpoint ideas that you can talk about in your essay. 
Um, one option with the brainstorming is to sort of keep the prompts aside actually and go with the more creative route and let your ideas flow, see where they take you naturally. This is helpful if you're potentially getting stuck, you're not sure where to start, or maybe you're a creative writer and that's just how you work. So in that case, don't cut yourself off or put yourself in a, in a box, just kind of, you know, go with that flow. And in that case, we'll look at the first and the last prompt could be, those might work well for you if you're a creative writer. Right. However, you know, if you're struggling, you know, to find a topic to write about or make your essay more meaningful, then I suggest turning back to the prompts for guidance. It's almost like they're giving you the answer to what a college wants to know about you. And I think if thinking about it this way, it's almost like strategic. Um, so, so what is your strategy when you're writing about yourself? Think about what you want to tell the admissions about yourself and how you want to present yourself. And then also make sure you're addressing the whole prompt. If there's multiple questions, be sure that you're answering all of it. So there's there's seven different prompts in the Common App, and we are going to break them down for you, okay? So for this first prompt, some students have a background, identity, or talent that is so meaningful, they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. So this is our identity prompt. Um, and I can't stress enough that this prompt is not just about the person you are now, but it's about ultimately the person you're going to be on a school campus. So this is a great one to talk about potentially um, something in your culture, or it could be a creative outlet that you feel is very important to who you are. It could be an important skill that you've developed over time or an outlier that sheds light on your identity. Um, but yeah, this one is really about that peek into your soul. For this next prompt, prompt two, this is our challenge prompt. The lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you and what did you learn from the experience? So with the challenge prompt, the biggest thing to note is that there's a ratio of the challenge to the shift in your perspective to ultimately how you've grown from it and how you're going to apply what you've learned in your future. So even though this is about a potential challenge or a perceived failure or somewhere you felt like you tripped up along the way, we're going to frame it in the way that doesn't get too negative and it doesn't get too bogged down on the challenge mm. itself. And we're ultimately not going to want to focus on that negativity. We're going to want to spin it to say, well, even if I did fail here, maybe that failure taught me something about myself that ultimately led to greater success. And that's kind of the way we might want to frame it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, okay, so prompt number three, reflect on a time when you challenged a belief or idea, what prompted your thinking and what was the outcome? Okay, so let's say you question some scientific hypothesis, put it to the test, and now you're waiting for the patents to be approved. So yes, good for you, and definitely write about this. Um, so standing up for your belief is really admirable and so important but just be careful with this prompt not to come off as like you know kind of too much of a troublemaker um colleges campuses need to make sure you can fit in their campus so i, I had a student once who was like challenging this and and making sure that you know she kind of was like roughing it up a lot and, and like I said, it is so great to stand up for your beliefs. Just make sure that, you know, first of all, this is your, your one impression that you're, you know, you're able to convey to the admissions team. Again, what is your strategy and how is the one way that you want to present yourself to the team? Just think about it. I'm all for your beliefs, and I and I do think you need to stand by your convictions. Just think about how you want to present yourself. 
All right, prompt number four. So this prompt not only asks you to reflect on uh, something that someone has done for you that has made you happy and thankful, it also asks, how has this gratitude affected you or motivated you? So it's the second part of the prompt where you should spend the majority of your essay. So for example, if someone special taught you how to swim and now you're volunteering at pools in underserved communities, you can start with yourself in the water, but then move quickly to what you're doing now and show us how the original act is changing the lives of others through what you're doing. All right. Prompt number five. I love this prompt and I think a lot of people use it because it has so much flexibility to it. Discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and new understanding of yourself or others. It's kind of like the challenge prompt, but with a positive twist. Um, so you know you could even talk about how you discovered your interest in your major there's so many things that you can use this prompt for you might even want to start with the growth and think back to what got you to where you had that growth prompt number six um, describe a topic idea or concept that you find so engaging um, that it makes you lose all track of time so what makes you lose all track of time let's say it's tap dancing that's something that i love um, but why does it captivate you that's i think key here so can you articulate this and it's got to be something more than just i've been doing it since i was five so is there something about that syncopated rhythm that really moves you is about the history of the art form you've got to go a little bit deeper like Sajel said before, like, can you, like, why? Keep asking yourself, why, why? And that's what makes for the great essay. And then there's the part about and what or who do you turn to when you wanna learn more? Here, they're looking to see your creative and your critical thinking in action. Are you going above and beyond? So are you watching Nicholas Brothers movies? Are you reading about the history or studying under different teachers? Can you show your passion about the subject? And then there's the last prompt, Sage. Yeah, so I love this prompt. I mean, it's the it's just the free the free prompt. You can write about anything you want within reason, but it's share an essay on any topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written one that responds to a different prompt or one of your own design. So this is this is for you if number one, you're struggling to make an experience fit. So let's say you go through the brainstorming process and you decide what you want to write about, but you're not quite sure if it fits into any of the six prompts that we talked about previously then this is the prompt for you because you can basically design it however you want or just write freely and obviously you still want to follow a structure and i want to note that this prompt still in some ways is still you can still use the previous prompts to sort of guide you as to what they're looking for it still might be about something about your identity it still might incorporate a skill but this is for you if you just kind of want to go a little bit more creative with it um and then the other thing is with this this prompt you can kind of go a little bit more outside the box so maybe there's a book that's transformed your worldview and you want to talk about the parallels between you and that particular character or maybe you want to combine a different a couple different things maybe you want to talk about um you want to talk about swimming but you also want to talk about the emotional capacity that you gained that is represented by swimming or maybe it's that family trip that's ultimately shaped you over the many years that you've gone on it and that's finishes up our prompts so now we're going to go into the writing so this is sort of you've done your brainstorming process and now we're going into sort of the bulk of the work so the big idea is here to keep in mind for you number one personal voice so we want to employ something called a personal voice this is going to be different for everybody it doesn't mean you have to be 
an amazing creative writer and use a ton of descriptive imagery, if that's not your style, if that's not your strong suit, then maybe that's not the, the path for you. But you should take yourself out of the headspace of a research essay or a resume. And you want to approach this essay more like we talked about, a diary entry, potentially a conversation with a close friend in which you're revealing your inner thoughts, you're processing, you're not just stating the events, you're accounting for that processing time and what happens in the in-between. If you're stuck, something that often, often helps to find this personal voice or reconnect with it is using the tool of literally speaking, talk it out, write like you're talking to your best friend or literally pick up your phone open your voice memos, and record yourself. Record yourself telling a story and then try to transcribe it from there. Oftentimes, I find this all the time with my students that when they're talking, I'm like, wow, I'm engaged. I can hear what they're saying clearly. There's self-reflection in there. But then they go to write the essay and it doesn't have the same oomph to it. So if you're struggling with that, and it feels like you've taken a step outside the experience instead of placing yourself in the midst of it, this is something that can help. Another thing that we want to talk about is developing themes. So we talked a little bit about this in the brainstorming process with the threads. We talked about how to sort of follow that line of questioning with the why. But I suggest that you unpack this before you start to write. So of course, you know, as you write, you're going to gather more about your self-reflection and you're going to learn more. But I think that you should start to question before you even write the essay, how is what you're writing about, whatever it may be, going to serve as a window into your soul? So maybe this essay is about the skill of running or track and field. But is there somewhere else in your life that you felt you had to run away from something or run towards it? How can you connect the two? And another kind of idea about that, flipping the writing tactic, instead of you know writing about that swim team, what is that swim team revealing about you that's deeper? So you should use this direction, this target to have in mind because it will impact the way you start to write the details in the anecdotal portion of your essay. And it will give it a more self-reflective quality. Circling back to our threads, this is where you get into the thematic nature of your experience. Use the threads in your brainstorm. Use the patterns. Use the, the sort of connections. Then we're going to talk about different angles. So when it comes to themes, just know, or a topic, just know that you can approach it an idea that you have from all sorts of angles. It could be thematic in many types of ways. Just because you've started an essay about winning the medal at a debate doesn't mean that it's actually going to be about winning. Could your essay be about releasing control or the way your goals have shifted? Um, just know that you can look at things from many different ways. And oftentimes that's when we get the most complex an analysis or self-reflection. It's when, oh, we have two competing thoughts here. But how do we connect them? How do we unite them? What is the, the connection and what's apparently different? This leads me into my next thought about looking for the arc, looking for the growth. Sometimes it's not apparent in an essay, but the point is we want to have room. We want to have space. We want to have growth. We want to see you take us on a journey. And the way that we do that is by accounting for shifts in perspective throughout the essay that can make a simple idea a lot more complex. So ask yourself, what is the journey here? Where am I starting? If I'm starting from a place of potentially a challenge and there is a failure involved, well, we don't want to end up there. So how do we, what's the arc or the journey we go on to get from point A to B to C to D, right? Same goes for starting positively. Maybe you start on top of the world, but maybe you go some, through some bumps and then you come back to that place. But whatever it may be, just remember that we want to be actively seeking out that room for growth. And then our conclusion. So this is something that might be a different approach than a lot of your school essays, because oftentimes a conclusion can be termed a summary. 
So this is the place where we're just gonna summarize everything that we wrote about in the essay. This conclusion is different. This conclusion is gonna be your thematic winner. It's gonna be that moment that leaves us thinking if we're the reader. We don't want a summary of what you've just said. We need an extension that adds on to your essay. And that doesn't mean it has to be huge. It doesn't mean you're gonna change the essay entirely. It could be a simple thought or a realization, some strong self-reflection. It could be a circle back moment. It could touch on an image or a memory from the beginning of your essay, or it could be a look towards your future, shining a light on what qualities you've ultimately gained that are gonna make you a stronger pr a prospect for the campus that you're, you're applying to. And if you're struggling with this, what to write in that conclusion? Some questions to ask yourself. What do you wanna do with your life? What are your goals and passions? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? How can you take the current moment and envision a little bit forward? And then just quickly, some common pitfalls and tips. Because of all this structural stuff, it can be a little bit confusing and we don't wanna hop around too much. So just make sure that you're following a flow. We talked about this with the conclusion. We don't want too much summary. We don't want something that's called redundancy, which is repetition of the same thing over and over again. And the last thing is assume that your reader is smart when it comes to the basics. So on the basic level, you can assume that you can lead them with a little bit of surprise. You don't have to give all the information away at the beginning of your essay. You don't have to write the essay with topic sentence, here's what I'm going to tell you about in my essay. You can let us kind of allow that to unfold on us. But at the same time, with the personal specifics, that's where you need to tell the reader more about. And with that, we're going to uh, move on to techniques and tips for writing. All right. So let's have some fun here. All right. Uh, write long. So when you're first starting your draft, um, don't edit yourself at the beginning. So you don't want to miss any of these great nuggets that are just going to come up when you're free writing. Um, and you'll, you might find that as you're writing, the stuff that happens at the end might be make for like a really great beginning of your essay. So, you know, I encourage my students sometimes just to start out writing in a notebook because then you won't be cutting and pasting and trying to nuance early on, just write. And at this point, don't even worry about word count. Yes, you've got, you know, 650 words, but at this point, word count is your enemy. Just get it all out there and who knows where your essay is gonna end up. Come late, leave early. This is one of my favorite tips. So we do not need to know every detail of your story. We don't need to know how you got there. Just drop us into the action. So for example, this is a lot of detail. My biology teacher helped me to get an internship at the zoo where I cleaned cages and did paperwork. So as opposed to this, as I swept the floor, the chimpanzee stared back at me from the other side of the bars. Kind of more interesting, right? Show, don't tell. This is a classic writer's technique. So telling a story will feel very dry where showing will make it come alive. So instead of writing, I was scared, so I left. Maybe something like hands trembling, I raced for the exit. Avoid bragging. So you can mention an accomplishment, but they're gonna have your honors and your transcript in the rest of your um, application. So if anything, your personal statement should reflect self-awareness and understanding about yourself. Use all your senses. So instead of always just describing how something looks, try adding in something how something tastes or how it sounds so this is going to add some different dimension to your piece and it'll kind of make it pop in different ways so be present in the immediacy 
don't feel like you have to write in the past all the time, even though it happened in the past. So it can be really effective to bring the reader into the action by using present tense. So, and you can also shift tense in your essay. Um, and, but you just need to make sure that you're doing it purposefully. And in the editing process, it's really important to go back and make sure that you're catching all of the shifts in tense. So also, I really don't recommend using passive voice. Rather, th things, rather than things happening to you, make sure that you are the one taking the action. And passive tense also uses up a lot of word count. So you want to make sure that you're the one that's, you know, doing everything. And create rhythm. So good writing has rhythm both within a sentence and between sentences. And the best way to hear this is to read your piece out loud. So you want to vary the sentence structure and use punctuation to your advantage. Long dashes and ellipsis can be great tools to prove a point. And sometimes exclamation marks can work, but just be judicious. You don't want to make it sound like a letter from camp, okay? All right, we're going to move on to our next topic. Yeah, so this is making the mundane more reflective. So turning the ordinary into something special. Um, we want to acknowledge just right off the bat, this is a new way of thinking. So we assume that you haven't had too much experience with this type of writing before, and that's okay. It's very different from the essays that you're writing in class, and being open and personal and self-reflective isn't always the easiest thing. So keep that in mind and know that it's going to take time. Something that can help with this is a deep dive. So we want you to do a little bit of soul searching. Ask yourself why a particular endeavor meant something to you. I like to use this tactic, zoom in, zoom out. So if you're talking about a particular topic, zoom in. What are the unique things that make it um, interesting or compelling to you? What does it mean to you? But then zoom out. What does it mean in the larger context of the world? What is What are other opinions or societal views on this? That can help you sort of contextualize where you're sitting and what your opinion is on something that may differ or may resonate with the larger worldview. And then I also like to distill down. So that's three to four qualities about yourself, whether it's resilience or adaptability, vulnerability, your empathetic nature, could be any of those things, but distill those down, those qualities. Um, and those are to figure out by the end of this essay, what do you want us to know about you? And if those are those four qualities, make sure that you're weaving that into your essay. And then there's something just called, we've talked about this a lot, but it's the, the term that we like to use is peeling the onion, getting to the layers. So that's just getting to what's beneath the surface level. So asking yourself, what's beneath something that you're talking about? How can we get even deeper? How can we use those threads? How can we weave in the themes? And then the last thing is keeping in mind good roommate slash personality, but this is just to know that college admissions officers want to get a better sense of who they're accepting onto their campuses. Um, Northwestern, for example, says that they're reading the personal statements to decide if this person is someone they'd want their son or daughter to date or room with. So if you think about that, it's like a personality match and you want to match the school too. So the more you reveal about yourself and your nature and your personality, you can use that maybe a cheeky voice or maybe include some humor. If that's not you and you're more of a straight shooter, then, then do that. But we want to identify what this essay is going to say about you, what it's going to re reveal about your personality, and that's going to aut automatically cut down the the fluff, make it more concise, and allow you to strike that personal tone. All right. Okay, we're coming into the final stretch now. We're on editing. So guys, plan on many edits and drafts. Writing a personal statement takes a lot of work, and you may feel frustrated at times, but you will get there. And editing is key to the whole process. 
I often tell students that you spent four years of getting good grades in high school. And so your essays are really an important part of the application process. It is worth doing the work and taking it over the finish line. Don't give up when you are so close. Do the work. Okay, so nothing is precious. <laughs> And once you have your direction and thesis and you, be, you begin to look over your draft for superfluous statements and words, you may have to lose stuff that you love. And this can be tough for a writer. I know this all my heart. Um, but if things don't meet your strategic and creative needs, it's got to go. I'm so sorry. Okay, every word counts. When you have 650 word limit, you have to be selective with your word choice. Um, the meaning and sound of some words are just better than others. At the same time, stick to your own voice. Some students think they have to write like a poet or a scholar, and that's really just not the case. Be genuine. It's so much better. And they, the, the readers, the admission readers will read right through it. Um, most importantly, just look for easy places to cut words. You can replace going to with the word will and eliminate very and just. You know, it's those are easy things to get rid of. Okay, so read your essay out loud. What should you be listening for? Does it flow well? Can you hear your own voice? Are the transitions natural? Does something seem out of place? Is there awkward phrasing? Your own proofreading is hugely valuable. Go through it carefully. And, and one of my own techniques is I, I read things backwards, like the last paragraph first because that's always the last thing and by then I'm bored of it and I, I'll miss things. So this is where I catch maybe tense consistency and typos and grammatical errors. So try it. And then we have proofreaders and uh, limit options. So we highly recommend that you have another person carefully proofread your essay. And this doesn't mean just read your essay. It means carefully proofread your essay. It's important that you submit it without errors. And at the same time, be careful getting too much feedback on the content itself. Writing is highly subjective, and it can be really confusing when you get differing opinions. So, Sejal, do you have anything else to add at this point? No, I think that that pretty much concludes it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was such a so nice spending time with you all, and um, we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you, ladies, uh, so much. Linnell, can you go to the next slide? With oh, yeah, questions? absolutely. And for are. everyone else out there, uh, feel free, please type any questions in the Q&A box. Uh, as those come in, I will be glad to read them uh, to our presenters and, and get some live answers for you. If there's anything more personal or specific or direct that you're interested in or you want any additional follow-up, all of our contact info is up on the screen. You're happy to be a resource. Uh, your Pali College Center is a great resource as well with lots of staff as well. Uh, so take advantage of, of the resources, if you will. We do have a few questions that came in uh, prior to the presentation that I want to make sure we get answered for those of you that might have submitted something. Um, this first one I'm going to direct to Sejo is about the performing arts portfolio and how to best incorporate a performing arts background into your personal statement. Definitely. So you're going to have a supplement and additional writing to do if you are applying to be a musical theater major, an arts major, you're going to have a portfolio segment already, but by the same token, um, your personal statement is something about your identity and that 
may very well include um, something about your passion, something about your art. Um, and so in that case, it may be a good thing to think about and include in your brainstorm if you want to be writing about um, your talent in that in that personal statement. But they, just keep in mind, there will be a supplement as well for most schools. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question is about uh, how to convey emotion and inspiration from the beginning all the way to the end. How do you keep that voice strong and, and convey that throughout the entire personal statement? Any, any good tips for any for the uh, folks listening? I, I think that basically what we were talking about in all of the tips about going deep and peeling that onion and starting with all of the just the storytelling techniques will help to make it go all the way through. Don't you agree, Sajil? Yeah, absolutely. And like thinking about, you know, descriptive language, is there places where you can incorporate a thought? I like to use italics all a lot of the time or a quotation to um instead of saying, you know explaining a situation, what were you thinking in that moment? What were the emotions going through you? Um, obviously you don't wanna get bogged down in too much. Um, it's easy to get maybe too sappy or too flowery with that. So we wanna avoid that. But as long as you're being, again, genuine, you're being honest, you're incorporating that sort of you know, um, personal voice, it's going to convey a level of emotion. Don't, I would say, don't hyper-focus on the emotion, but find places where you can check in with yourself and maybe there is a recurrent thought that you that you have. And, right. and yeah, and I also think, yes, so it's the emotion versus making sure that, you know, whatever prompt that you're you're answering is um that they're both being addressed. focused on. Yeah, addressed. Thank you. Yeah, I would say it's definitely that's a great point. It's a balance. It's always a balance. So um definitely sometimes you may swing to one side of the pendulum and then you just have to in the editing process start to reel yourself back in, read it aloud, have some proof someone proofread it, and just make sure that you're not going too far in one direction or the other. Great. Th thank you both so much. Uh the next question that's come in is can you explain how you use how is it possible to use one essay on multiple applications? Uh, how can you, how does it cross over to multiple schools? Uh, do different schools look for different things? You know, how do you personalize it per school? And maybe some of that comes into play with the supplemental uh, essays, but can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So first of all, the, the, what we talked about today was the personal statement, and that goes with the, the common app in any place that you are applying to with the common app, you can um, use this essay. Um, if you, you can possibly do a cut down of this essay for one of your UC essays, depending on which um, prompt you use for the common app and which prompt or which personal insight question it works best with for UC. You just have to kind of um, see which ones um, are interchangeable. Um, so it, it, you know, there are a lot of colleges ask, why are you applying to the school or what interest in your, why are you interested in a particular major? And you can um, build essays that have a, a particular response to that. And, and just make sure you're doing the research per school. Don't make sure that you change things, um, but you can build, talk about your interest in what your major is and what your passion is, and then substitute the different programs at the schools for the essays. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, with the supplements, there's a lot of, I would say there is quite a quite a good amount of overlap. This is again, this is the, the this presentation was about specifically your personal statement for the common app. But if we're talking about more of the supplements um between different schools, again, it's going to be a lot of the why the school type of essay. Um, and so in that case, you know, it does get to be a lot of writing. So um, to plan and keep in mind that there is going to be some overlap. It's helpful to make a Google Doc of all of your 
different prompts and keep track of the ones that potentially overlap. And that way you can, again, you know, have maybe like a base response for some of your interests and things you've done and then tailor it to the school. Um, I think the, the, the personal statement's a little bit more specific just because it's not as straightforward as the academic nature of some of the supplemental prompts. Um, it tends to be a little bit more of an inward look and probably takes, I would say, more work than most of your other supplements. But again, the UCs can sometimes interchange or you can use a UC prompt and lengthen it for your common app potentially too. Great, thank you ladies. And I've got one more for you as, as of now, but the question is about uh, the best way to incorporate serious life situations, whether it's medical, um, sickness, COVID, uh, how do you make this a part of your essays without it seeming uh, like a like cheesy, like a, a movie, if you will, um, and it to be unique and stand out because I'm sure lots of people have gone through serious life situations. And what are your what's your advice on on addressing a, a topic like that? Yeah, I mean, I think um, serious life situations can make for great personal statements. You know, not to downplay obviously the weight of an event, but um, if that is something that you feel really shaped you or challenged you. Um, I would say it's definitely an opportunity for, for you to write about that. I think the key thing that we have to go back to is what we mentioned in the arc of it, the growth of it. Um, we don't wanna stay in one place for too long. So if you do have some backstory, maybe that's 30% and then the other 60 to 70% is gonna be what you did with that, what you did with that circumstance. Did you, did you harness it in some way? Did you volunteer some way? Um, somewhere? Did you grow as a person from that experience? So it is true that we don't want to dwell in the negativity too long. And that is, I would say, the biggest pitfall to be aware of with the sort of challenging experiences. But by the same token, don't shy away from it. It's definitely an opportunity for you to look inwards and, and you know, reveal something personal if, if that's what you feel good about. Um, I would say if it's related to COVID, that's when we want to sort of stay away from just because it is a sort of, you know, everyone went through it. And so um, it's sort of just a general rule that we want to, we don't want to, you can mention it. Absolutely. You could in a, in a quick, you know, sound bite. you can say during COVID or during this time period or amplified by COVID, however you want to share that, but I wouldn't make an essay about COVID because again, it's, that is one experience that, you know, it is more universal. There's also a lot of um, schools include an additional essay prompt asking about, you know, your hardships during COVID. So you could do that there. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, ladies, so much for spending uh, your time tonight. Uh, if any other questions come up or, or anybody thinks of anything, again, our contact info is on the slide. We would be happy to help. We'd be happy to have a consultation and talk with you individually. Uh, we are here to help. So thank you again. Have a good rest of your evening, everyone. And we will wave goodbye.